Hi, welcome to my watch blog, um, part two, and uh, I got two watches on uh, eBay, so I took one to get serviced, and this is the one that I got serviced right here. Um, it's a uh, Ulysses Narden made in New York, gold filled case. It's got a miniature um, automatic movement in it, and um, yeah, that's my Ulysses Narden, and I had it serviced um, here in Vancouver locally. I had it serviced, so it's running pretty good. Um, it's not a super accurate watch, I guess, I don't know, but it's running pretty accurate right now. So. Um, and I got a deployment clasp for it on uh, eBay. I got a Cartier deployment clasp. And this isn't going to be the final strap, but there is the Cartier uh, deployment strap that I got on eBay. Um, second hand, I guess. Somebody was selling it. So you can just put um, with this Cartier deployment strap clasp you can just put an 18 millimeter band in there um, so yeah it's got it's really nicely made and it's got a couple screws so that's the uh, Cartier deployment and it just clicks clicks close snaps closed just like that so that's my uh, Cartier deployment and I'm gonna get a new strap too I ordered a new strap that's what it looks like so yeah, that's the Cartier deployment on my um, Ulysses Narden uh, eBay watch that I got. It's gold filled case, made in New York, assembled in New York, but the movement is from Swiss, Swiss movement, and I believe it's from the 40s or the 50s. And uh, the dial is in super nice condition. And uh, yeah, it's all original Ulysses Narden, just serviced. From Florida, I got it. Bought it from Florida on eBay. So yes, and now here is my um, Hublot. Here's the Hublot, and it's the uh, the model number is one five zero one five. 1550-2 I think that's the model number 1550-2 so I don't know if you can see that very well but uh, yeah that's the Hublot 1550-2 it uses an ETA movement um, the ETA movement is the uh, the model of the ETA movement is uh, 2892 2 ETA 2892 2. So, and I don't know anything about watches. So, but uh, I had a hell of a time. I took the watch out of the case. Um, there are two screws that hold the, the movement in the case, and there's two screws and two little metal pieces that hold the movement inside this case so you take those screws out and those two little things hold the movement in the case and then there's a button on the 2892-2 ETA you can push a little button with like something pointy and then the um, the uh, crown pops out and um, I did a lot of polishing on this case it's got um, a rotating bezel so you can see that rotating bezel. I cleaned that. It was really dirty. That rotating bezel, you can just pop it off and it has a clip. So it clips back in. So yeah, I sh as you can see, I shined it up nicely on each side. Um, uh, I'm just gonna put a regular strap on because the uh, Hublot strap is really expensive. It didn't come with the Hublot strap and it's really expensive. It's like probably, you know, could be just around a thousand dollars just for a strap for this watch. 
because this model is the gold and stainless steel hublot. It's the gold and stainless steel, and you can see it was bashed up. I uh, it's got a sapphire crystal, and it's been bashed up. So I um, I was able to like get a lot of the scratches out with um, uh, jewel jeweler's paste, jeweler's polish. So yeah, you can take the crown out. You can take the whole movement out of the case. Um, and actually, I um, I reloomed, and this was like a real headache, because I took actually the um, I took the hands off the face, I took the face off the watch, off the movement, and see those little dots? Um, that's new loom in there. It's new, um, you know, uh, loom. So the hands were all like cracking. The loom was all cracking on the hands. And um, so it looks okay. I mean, under a magnifying glass, you can still see it's not a perfect job. It's, you know, it's a little bit, you know, it's not the most perfect job. And the hardest part is getting the hands back on. That's really tricky because, um, yeah, it's really tricky to get the hands back on. You have to have the big hand first. The big hand goes on first, and you have to really kind of push it down. I don't have even have the tools to properly mount the um, the hands so I just use tweezers and um, I was having a lot of trouble because the second hand was hitting the um, minute hand and um, I realized that the minute hand was not seated properly and I think that the reason the minute hand was not seated properly was probably that the hour hand may not have been seated properly so I really took the time and actually set up a light so I could really get a lot of light on what I was doing. And I used a magnifying glass and um, uh, it's really tiny to see it. So I had just to mount the, the hands. I used a pair of, you know, needle nose tweeter, tweezers and um, just to get the hands to sit properly is really quite tricky. Um, not to mention to get the loom on was really tricky too like each one of those dots of loom is got uh, um, it's got the loom on there and um, so you basically have to take off the old loom and um, it's really not an easy process because the loom is like hard and crusty and you have to sort of dig the loom out of each one of those they're like little tiny little um, uh, metal um, I don't even know what you say they're like little metal cups each one of those little things on the each one of the numbers is a little metal cup and it holds the loom and you kind of have to dig the loom out it's it's not easy so you dig the loom out and then but when you put the new loom on it's just so easy because you just put a drop on and it just goes boom boom you just go all the way around put a new drop of loom on all each one of those things and so it actually when you put it on it actually goes pretty quick um, the hands are another story they're not easy when you do the hands you gotta I advise is that um, you want the front of the hands to look as nice as possible so apply the hands to the back of the loom um, that way that um, you know it, it, it'll look nice in the front so just uh, flip the hand over and, do, and apply the loom to the back of the hand that's my advice to you and um, just follow the directions. I got a loom kit on uh, eBay and just follow the directions on how to do it and um, you just mix up your loom. It's got a, uh, like a sort of a glue paste and then it's got the, the powder loom and so you just mix that up and then you just apply it with, um, I think I applied it with um, a really fine uh, screwdriver. Um, that's what I used to apply it with and um, and then you actually too actually you let it dry overnight and then I actually had to sand it like with emery boards um, you don't want any of the loom uh, you know you don't want a big bump of loom on there so you just kinda you want the hands to be as flat as possible so you just take an emery board and gently a very fine emery board and you basically sand off the excess loom and it's really quite a process so anyways, this watch is coming along. Um, 
I think everybody that uh, is interested in watches, you know, there's so many automatic um, watches you can buy. So why not buy an old fixer upper, right? Like why not buy um, a really nice watch that's that you can look like you can really give it a fix up, you know? Because it's quite quite rewarding, you know, to fix it up. What I even did is the the sapphire crystal is. You know it should last a lifetime this sapphire crystal so um, it's really super strong sapphire crystal and um, so it's actually you know you can see a few scratches when you hold it in the light you can see a few tiny scratches in the sapphire crystal the other thing I did and this is probably not like a watchmaker's trick or anything, but I took a little bit of tiny, tiny, tiny bit of mineral oil on a Q-tip, and that kind of makes the dial nice and dark and shiny. See how it's nice and dark and shiny? Well, on some of these old watches, the uh, dial is sort of, um, it gets sort of faded, and it also gets sort of, um, I would say, washed out. And um, to bring it back, a little tiny 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 bit of mineral oil on a q-tip and you just sort of like um, work it into the dial and that sort of brings it out nice the blackness of the dial out quite nicely and it makes it look less dull so these are all the things that I've done to this watch this watch hasn't been overhauled um, when I bought it it's still working I don't even know what kind of time is keeping like it seems to be quite accurate right now so I have not adjusted it and um, I don't have a beat a beat uh, timer or anything like that so but um, I probably will see how how if it keeps functioning quite well and I'll be very happy and if it's within like a minute a day or less I'll be super happy and um, so that's uh, it's quite rewarding actually the, pr the process of polishing the case was super fun um, so yeah, polishing the case and you can see the gold is nice and polished and, you know, and learning about watches like this is an ETA, um, 2892-2 movement. It was their like most at the time it was their most miniature movement. Um, I think it was their most flat movement, flat automatic movement at the time. And, um, and it's replaced now by the ETA 2892A2. So, yeah, it's quite nerve wracking. Um, the auto wind on this one is a ball bearing auto winder, like free weight. It's like a little spinning free weight, and um, it doesn't spin that freely. It does spin, but not as freely as it could be. So, you know, um, I don't know. Um, I actually ordered a new stem. Uh, for this as well so uh, you can order actual parts for this watch for this movement in ETA 2892-2 so I'm um, I'm going to use the same crown but the stem is a little bit on the rusty side and corroded side so I ordered like a brand new ETA 2892-2 stem and it was you know $13 or something so that'll be going in and um, so that's so re-looming, polishing in the case, um, and uh, learning about the watch, and um, and I will replace the stem as well. So and I'm gonna do the a uh, nice strap on it too. I'm gonna do a nice uh, strap similar to this Cartier clasp on this watch too. So I'm gonna buy. Um, a nice clasp like this. Um, you can even use um, regular regular straps for this because basically for this Cartier strap, I think this is like one of their like 16 millimeter straps, Cartier's 16 millimeter. So you can see that the long part of the strap just folds in like that. And um, there's also a little pin that you can take out with a screwdriver and it unscrews. So you can unscrew that pin Put the leather through like that, fit it to your size, put the screw back in, and then on here what you do is you take your normal strap, you remove all of the parts 
from this end you know like the little um, I don't even know what you call it it's like there's a little ring with a little belt loop like a little belt buckle thing so you can completely remove that and again there's another screw inside this Cartier thing this Cartier clasp you pull up you unscrew that screw pull that um, pin out <clears throat> and then you can put your strap in and put the pin back through and then you just measure the size of your uh, hand and then you know you can adjust this as necessary so that it fits your wrist and then you can see it just folds like that on your wrist and it actually just makes a nice snapping sound there it snapped so and that's what it looks like this is what it looks like when it's on your wrist so I'm gonna get that one something similar to that for this one as well for the um, Hublot so there you go there's my um, in front of the Hublot that's my um, my other one so yeah I kind of went watch crazy so yeah those are my Ulysses Narden cold filled case miniature automatic movement inside there that's been serviced recently with the Cartier clasp and here's my Hublot that's been relumed I didn't relume that little dot there on the top of the dial I haven't relumed that so anyways um, in the dark you can't really it's not that bright in the dark still the only thing that shows up really um, in the dark is that big hand that big hand really shows up nicely in the dark so anyways there it is um, the Hublot with the uh, ETA movement so yeah that's my update so far maybe I'll do another video um, when I make some more progress thanks for watching